This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. To get a transcript of today's show, plus all future transcripts emailed to you, go to offthechainshow.com. Prepare yourself for the uncensored, nothing held back, no BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. Lock and low, baby. It's finally time to get out your guns and, and use them for a change instead of just wanking around at the gun range. <laughs> you have a nice collection of Glocks we can get out and use, right? Yeah, yeah, I've got, uh, I think, two, a 21 and a 17. Well, there you go, because two is one and one is none. Gotta have two of them, man. You never know when one's going to go down. Although with a Glock, you know what? Probably never. Just, you know, put 4,000 rounds through that thing, dump it in salt water for two weeks, <laughs> take it out, put another 4,000 rounds in it, dump it in salt water for a month, take it out. It'll just keep firing. So yeah, but still two is good. By, by the way, I'm not promoting taking out your guns and, and having an armed revolution yet. Yeah, not yet, at least. I'll tell you, <laughs> I was tempted on the 4th of July. I, I was so proud in my neighborhood. I'm like, I live in a good neighborhood. We don't have anybody popping off fireworks. And then as soon as I said <laughs> that, right in front of my house, some jerk starts blowing up fireworks. And I'm like, oh, damn, you know what? I feel like getting out my gun, at least a 22, and just start shooting it up in the air and join the party. <laughs> oh, so so that was my hood, by the way. Well, the, the neighborhood where I used to work in as a cop, New Year's Eve, before midnight, we always made sure we were undercover. We were, we were in a building with a concrete roof or something because it never failed. Every year, somebody go outside and start shooting their gun up in there. Woo-hoo! Happy New Year! And sure enough, what goes up must come down and somebody would take one in the head and die. No. So, so at least they were only shooting off fireworks in your neighborhood, not not busting camps in the air like no you were going to do. I, yeah, I'm going to. gonna. It's uh, What was that beer commercial where they shot the guns and then it was like the bullets? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Now I got to go look that up on YouTube. So listen, I'm not talking about getting out your guns and using them for any violent purposes i'm talking i'm speaking metaphorically today and that's why i i titled this buy a 50 caliber machine gun and guard this like all the gold that used to be in fort knox mainly because well to be honest with you i just want to see how you dealt with that title jonathan <laughs> thank you <laughs> i want to see how that fits on itunes and how itunes is going to deal with it I- i'm talking about here's what i'm talking about guarding actually no we'll do an open loop i'll tell you i'll tell you what i'm talking about guarding in in a minute but first i figured something out something by the way i always have to spell my language to the transcriptionist something is s-u-m-p-i-n apostrophe something so i figured something out if you do what the majority does and that includes mentally hmm, how do i say this mentally ingesting what they ingest you know what you're probably going to get the same results they get maybe worse and not sure about you but i don't like average like average probably used to be cool my my grandpa's generation you know a, a dude who lived through the depression you know rolled up his shirt sleeves and did whatever it took to provide for his family you know got an engineering degree uh, worked hard for Babcock and Wilcox as an engineer, had a bunch of patents to his name, you know, never became rich, but did OK for himself. I mean, that was average back in the day. But I ain't liking what I'm seeing average now. It's like, you know, average is sitting around watching all, all these stupid programs on TV and Dr. Phil and people getting spoon fed this big load of crap on TV that that it's okay to, you know, go out there and don't even try. So you can just be, you can be a failure with a clear conscience and don't worry about it because uh, the government going to take care of you. So you really shouldn't try. So that it looks like 
That's what average is to me. And I looked up some statistics on this, Jonathan. All right. You know, because we know all statistics are true. <clears throat> so here's the average. The average American watches more than four hours of TV each day. That's 28 hours a week or, or two months. This, that's equals two months, a nonstop TV watching a year. So imagine over, if you only live to 65, over those 65 years, you will have spent nine years in front of the boob tube. Does that boggle the mind or what? It scares the hell out of me. Oh, it's worse. It, it's worse. Minutes per week, the average child watches TV, 1,680, okay? All right, so get the minute. There's a reason I'm breaking it down into minutes. Watching TV, 1,680. The number of minutes per week that parents spend in meaningful conversation with their children, 3.5. No. Oh, stick with me, my brother. It's worse. Number of murders seen on TV by the time the average child finishes elementary school. 8,000. 8,000 murders seen on TV. The number of violent acts seen on TV by age 18, 200,000. Percent of Americans overweight or obese, 68%. Okay. I, it makes me wonder do you think being planted on their ass in front of the TV <laughs> and eating junk food and drinking pop, as we used to call it in Ohio? Drinking soda, maybe that's maybe that's a contributing factor. I don't know. Watching Doritos commercials, craving them. Yeah, exactly. Doritos and Doritos and Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. <laughs> Breakfast of Champions. Percentage of Americans who can name the Three Stooges, fifty nine percent. That in itself is amazing. Seeing as how that was a show that came out what in the thirties or the forties. Right. All right. The percentage who can name at least three U.S. Supreme Court justices, 17%. Mm. The average American carries more than $8,000 in credit card debt and spends 13 hours a week surfing the internet, looking at pictures of cats on Facebook. So <laughs> I actually, I ad-libbed that last part about Facebook, but that's probably true. So um, talk about just local TV broadcasts. And I did something I never do, not anymore. Last night, just to verify if this was true, I watched the Orlando News last night. So 53.8% of their broadcasts are, uh, are stories about crime, disaster, and war. And another 30% is time devoted to advertising. So... If you do the numbers, that leaves 0.7% <laughs> devoted to public service announcements or at the very last 15 second mention at the end, like, oh, little, little Billy Fleming uh, grew flowers and took them to a old folks home. You know, that stuff. So all negative. Listen, are, are you figuring out what you need to buy a 50 caliber machine gun to start guarding like all the gold that used to be in Fort Knox? I'm talking about your mind, my brothers and sisters. It's maybe something that you should take a look at, your input, because I think maybe you should guard this portal to your mind as if your life depended on it, because it does. So, so maybe you should start looking at what you're allowing to enter through that portal and analyzing what it's telling you. OK, so so look at the TV shows you're watching, websites you go to, news stations, whatever media outlets you go to. You know, you like peeking into Yahoo News or whatever. OK, so make a list of all that stuff you're letting through that portal and then look at it and see if you can boil it all down to its core message. So like we just talked about the local news. All right. So I can boil that down to their core message. Well, a couple, a couple of variations. People are bad or this world is a dangerous place. Troubles lurking at every corner. Okay. 
basically what I'm talking about is look at the your input and if you stripped everything away what is the core message that this person this media this program is telling me and do that for every freaking thing you watch or read and i think you're going to be amazed at what you're letting enter through that portal you're letting stuff through that portal to your mind that you probably wouldn't inflict on your worst enemy so I'm just encouraging you to take a look at that, mostly because <laughs> I've recently started taking a look at it. Just just like this pastor told me, uh, Jonathan, <laughs> this pastor once told me, you want to know what the pastor's struggling with? Then, then you look at what he keeps preaching about. He's preaching about the sins of alcohol and he's going all hellfire and brimstone on you. That dude's an alcoholic and he's drinking right now. If he's talking about you're going to hell for committing adultery, that dude's in an adulterous relationship. So I feel like I have the right to preach to you today about what you're allowing through the portal to your mind, because I'm re starting all over again and reevaluating everything. And I'm guarding this thing. Guard, garden, <laughs> guarding. I'm guarding that thing as if it's worth all the gold that used to be in Fort Knox. But don't ask me where that gold went. I don't know. I have theories, but because listen, here's the bottom line. And this is, this is uh, Jonathan. Some people will think this is so out of character for me because I'm such a pragmatic dude. Ain't I? <laughs> I mean, no woo woo fluffy stuff for me. It's like, roll up your shirt sleeves and get to work. You lazy sons of bitches. It's like, I'm just pragmatic, you know, but so this might sound like a weird statement coming out of my mouth, although maybe not now that I've been reevaluating what I'm allowing through the portal of my mind. Bottom line, there's two, what do we want to call it? Forces? That almost sounds too Star Wars-ish. There are, there are two different energies. Let's say energies, because that we can measure. That we can measure with like EEG machines and all kinds of other stuff. So there's two different energies fighting for control of your mind. And, you know, we're talking about boiling down the message of all those different things you're cramming into your head. Now we're going to boil down these two energies fighting for control of your mind. That's fear and love. Because <laughs> that's just basically what they boil down to. The opposite of fear is love. You want to overcome fear. The only way I know to overcome it is with love. You can't it's not like you can quash it and get rid of it because this energy is constantly fighting to keep you in fear for a lot of different reasons. I mean, some of it's very meticulously engineered by people who it is very profitable for them to keep you in fear, a.k.a. the government. But love is the opposite of that. So you decide what you let in. And I'm just saying, man, if you're the average American, you're letting in 99% fear, my brothers and sisters. And, and, and so that's well and good for the average American because you ain't going to change them. They ain't ever going to change. They're average for a reason. Now, us and you and moi, we ain't average because we actually want to grow <laughs> personally and professionally and grow our businesses. We want to do stuff so we can't afford to remain average. So, so us and I think it's important for us to take a step back and evaluate what we're letting in this portal to our mind. And me personally, I just like this mental image of, of me with a 50 caliber machine gun, you know, on a, on a tripod, you know, just standing guard at this portal in my mind. And, and, you know, somebody flips on the evening news and I'm like, da, 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 and I just obliterate like, nope, no way. <laughs> I ain't letting that shit in. And shit is the appropriate word. Sorry if we offended, I offended you. And now we got the explicit rating on this episode, but that is the most appropriate word. In fact, if God himself appeared on earth, God himself would use the word shit to describe <laughs> that shit. So this was not a discouraging message. This is an encouraging message to encourage you to just take a look at what you're allowing through the portal of your mind. Because I think you're going to be amazed at how your life is going to change 
in how your relationships are going to improve and your business is going to improve, which means you're going to make mo cash out if you're just standing at the portal of your mind with that 50 caliber machine gun guarding it like it's all the gold that used to be in Fort Knox. We got to figure out a a longer title, (laughs) like all the gold that used to be in Fort Knox dot, 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 that they, that, that ain't there anymore. And we don't know where it went dot, dot, dot. Although we have theories dot, 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 but no proof. The end fit that on iTunes, Jonathan. Yeah. Challenge accepted. Oh man. Good stuff, Dan. I'm just thinking about a conversation I had with someone who works for me. And I always try to encourage him to do better. I encourage him to read books, encourage him. I I guess he wouldn't be my employee if he did that. But the thing that he said to me when we were just talking the other day, he's like, I gotta, I gotta find a new series. I gotta find a new series to watch. I I was watching this one series and and it wasn't that good. And I'm, I, I, but I went all the way through it and I gotta watch a new series. And and I'm like, oh yeah, I watched that, but I wasn't really into it about 30 minutes into the show. He's like, well, you gotta give it like 10 hours. And I almost shit. Oh I'm like, what? You have to do what to what? I'm like, you know how many books I can read in 10 hours? <laughs> Man. Wow. It's sickening. When he said that, my heart just sunk. I was, I felt so freaking bad for him. So I'm glad that you brought this up today, Dan. And what do you have coming up for us next time? You, you think I actually plan these rantings and discourse? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You can't do that. You can't do that because you started out the, uh, on one just a, two or three episodes ago telling us how you write all this stuff down. So ain't nobody going for that now. All right. But what I really want people to believe is that I, we just hit the record button. And you just wind me up and I go, no, <laughs> I wish. I'm just, I'm just not that spontaneous. I'd like to be, but I'm not. Yeah, I actually have to plan stuff out. All right. Next podcast. What am I talking about? Public school and your vagina. On the next Off the Chain show. <laughs> By the way, so a brief aside back to the topic we were talking about, not vaginas. You mentioned having a conversation. Let's add that to the list. I said, look at all the stuff you're reading, watching, all the websites you regularly go to. Make a note of all the conversations you have, too, and with whom you have them and boil those down to their basic message. Like I had to cut somebody out of my life recently because every single conversation with them was nothing but lack and fear. And as if that wasn't bad enough, then it was, oh, I can't believe, you know, how well a buddy of mine is doing. You're just doing so great, man. I'm like, even the Colombiana, my wife said, be careful that dude, that's envy talking there. Ooh. So that person had to be cut out of my life. So let's add conversations to the list of things you're going to evaluate. Yeah, that's powerful stuff. And now let's go back to vaginas. <laughs> Public <laughs> school in your vagina on the next Off the Chain. I, I'm looking forward to it. So that is a wrap for another Off the Chain show. Thank you, K9 Crew, for tuning in. And thank you, Doberman Dan, as always, for winding up and going. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, to get a transcript of today's show emailed to you, go to offthechainshow.com. This is the podcastfactory.com.